Hey guys, Ariel over here at Fine If. Today I'm doing a little winter decorating. And the first thing I'm making is some arrangements to go indoors. So the, what I'm starting out with is, and this comes in all shapes and sizes, um, a wet foam. This is made to soak up water. It's a floral foam. Uh, it might be a brand name, but there's one that goes by Oasis. This looks similar to, but it's different than a dry floral foam. Dry will not soak up moisture. You can't um, see any water dripping out of these, but they're pretty heavy now. I put them in some water in this bucket to soak a little bit ago to get as much, there I got one drop, as much moisture in them as I could. And that's what's going to allow this arrangement to stay alive indoors for uh, at least a month. I'm just gonna wedge them in here. Now for a container to do your arranging in, you could really use just about anything. The pine usually ends up pretty much obscuring the whole container. So something that you have around, um, something from a thrift store, garage sale, dollar store, whatever. The only important part is that to keep this alive indoors for any length of time, you're gonna need to be able to water it. So you do either need a container that's waterproof. This one used to be, it's old, it's kind of dented, uh, no longer is. So I made a liner for it. This is just a little, uh, plastic tub. You could do it with uh, oh, all kinds of little plastic things like a um, yogurt container, a uh, bottom of a milk bottle, just something that'll fit inside whatever container you are wanting to use and will hold water. So I've got some foam in there. You just need a block of, of foam of some kind um, that's firm enough that you can arrange into it. It doesn't have to be any particular shape. This sticks up a little bit. It wouldn't have to. I could take a knife and slice those off nice and flat, but it's gonna be fine that they're sticking up, so I'm not going to bother. Now I've collected a bunch of pine, of conifers of various kinds here, and those are all just from my uh, local woods around here. All kinds of little tips of branches. To make this look nice, you wanna do wanna use the branch tips. So this is a, a tip end, I'll show you, well, cut ends, you know, you don't wanna use ends like that, they're not gonna to look that nice. So to start out with some kind of tabletop arrangement like this, I wanna start with the center point. So I've found this one looks pretty nice and proportional and straight, that can be a big one with pine. And I'm gonna stick it straight through the foam now. That's a little higher than I think I actually want this arrangement to end up being. This is my starting point, we're not gonna end up with anything higher than this. So I'm gonna trim this um, branch just a little lower. And if you can snip branches at kind of an angle, that just makes it easier to slide into the foam. So I'm happier with that. That gives me my center. And from there, I'm gonna do with the same variety, go through my pile here. Uh, I'm going to try to do some side points, the challenging part can be to find um, straight pieces because a lot of these pines don't grow very straight. So if that's my center point, I'm gonna do a point kind of straight out one side, straight out the other side. I'm gonna end up with five points here basically. Um, for some reason, usually odd numbers do look more aesthetically appealing um, when you're doing something to look pretty. So I'm gonna have a top point, I've got two sides, I need another one to match on that side, that's gonna give me my five points. So let's find another kind of straight one that matches there. Hmm, mostly curled ones. And then from those, uh, those points, I'm simply going to start filling the rest of the scent. Now you could use all kinds of different um, greens, whatever grows in your area. I've used other ones before in other places. It's, it can be cool if you get ones like this one's got a little pine cone on there. When you're gonna cut, um, to, so I can get as much out of this as possible, I'm gonna go right down to that joint right there and cut that and cut this so I've got two, two sticks there I can use. But now everything else I put in here, I'm not gonna make anything higher or wider than my original points, but I'm gonna kind of fill this in a little bit. So I'm gonna do one on that side, 
I put this cute guy with the pine cone right in there. And how something looks in the end is is largely a matter of personal preference anyway. So that's part of the fun with doing stuff like this. You can make whatever you like. Now I'm just going to keep going around and filling in a variety of different... That was all lodgepole pine, but I've got some firs and other um, varieties here. So I'm going to use some of them because I like the textures of the different... Uh, kinds of needles, the different lengths, the different colors, and all of that together. I think it's a pretty combination. But you can use, like I said, just about anything. Uh, he got a little bit higher than my center point, but it kind of fits right into it, so maybe he'll actually be the new center. So I make him turn at the right angle. Now for me, well, he doesn't want to be at the right angle. So we're going to make him shorter. For me, I don't, as some of you who have been following me are aware, I've never um, celebrated Christmas or any other holidays, really. And so for me, this is not a Christmas arrangement. In fact, I usually wait till uh, it's chilly out here, but I have a hard time working with gloves on. Um, makes it too hard to coordinate what my fingers are doing. I usually wait till after Christmas to do winter arranging just to prove that it's not Christmassy for me, but uh, that's probably a little bit silly and I don't have to wait. And so since some of you guys were asking about that you'd like to see this kind of thing, I am going to show you now. I do give some of these arrangements often as, as gifts to some other friends who would like them and I just think it's it's fun and wintry to have some pine in the house for the uh, smell, the look, the, the cheerful greenness during the winter, all that kind of thing. But Christmas is just uh, not something I ever celebrate, so it's not something I've got any attachment to. Several people ask me, well, how does that work for you? So, well, it's kind of like, um, there's lots of other holidays out there in the world, like, you know, maybe you don't celebrate Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or whatever else, there are things you probably know exist. You know, some people care about them and celebrate them and have lots of great family memories related to them, but you just never did, so it doesn't affect your life. That's kind of how most of those holidays are for me. I got nothing against people who really want to celebrate them, and I certainly understand many people have got great family memories over those times, and I think that's wonderful. But this is something that probably most of you in reality are going to do as Christmas decorations. Now you can see this is starting to get kind of filled in here. I'm trying to work a little quickly because it's getting dark. Um, and it is helpful as you go to keep turning um, the little pot or bowl or basket or whatever you're arranging in to make sure you don't end up with it really big and bushy on one side and little and skinny and thin on the other side. Oh, it's getting chilly. Um, so spinning it and looking at, as, at it as you work can often help with that. Now for my background, I'm not any kind of, well, I guess maybe, I don't uh, have any formal training as a florist or anything like that, but I did used to work at a shop where I did um, dried flower arranging, some fresh arranging, definitely pine arranging, and all that kind of thing as a job, and I learned a lot of things from my wonderfully talented boss there. And so that's how I learned most of these skills. And it's something I really enjoy, so it's fun to do this and fun to be able to share with other people who, who like making things look pretty. Plus, if you live anywhere where you've got access to some kind of, of pine-type greens like this for free, this is a really inexpensive way to decorate. Um, if you need to go buy a bunch of greens, then it's a little bit more pricey, but a lot of people are going to decorate anyway. So that might not matter for you. But I'm thinking that my... My arrangement's looking pretty full here. I don't see any big holes. I'm seeing a, well, there's a little bit of a one right here I don't like. 
So I'm going to find a nice little tip of something and stick it in there. But once I don't see any more little holes with the greens, and you can put more in here, but you don't have to, and it's going to look just fine without it. It starts to get a little bit more challenging to, to reach the foam through the branches to push them in. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be stuffed full because now you can certainly just keep it basically like this and it would be a, a very nice arrangement as is. But if you want to make it a little bit more interesting and colorful and all of that, we can do several other things. Because that foam holds the things pretty well, you can kind of sometimes twist and turn your branches a little bit if you need to, to fix an angle or a hole, because like I said, most of these pine branches don't come perfectly straight, so they curve and turn not always the direction you want them to. But you do want to make sure every end of a branch is um, stuck the whole way into the foam, because if not, it will dry out in the warmth in your house and turn brown pretty quickly, and the rest will still be pretty and green. So I've got that all arranged, and the rest of it is not very messy, and so I'm going to take it inside and show you guys what I do in there. Okay, so now I'm inside. This is one of the few times you guys get to see my table flipped out like this, because I don't often use this workspace, but it's one reason I love this table so much, because it's nice to have when you need it. So now that I'm not racing against the uh, dark outside and... Um, I'm up at a little easier level to work and a little more light. I can kind of go over this more thoroughly. If you find um, dead pine needles stuck in there, you can just pull them out make it look prettier and greener. Not like they'd hurt anything. And when I came in here, I realized it had a little hole in one spot here that I didn't really like. So even though I kept the majority of my pine work outside, ran back out and grabbed Another couple of twigs to just fill that in to make me happier with it. And there's kind of a little hole right there as well. Now I would be fine probably without filling those because I'm going to fill other stuff in here now as well. First I'm going to move this so that I have room to work since my space is not excessively large. Okay, so now I've got my basket, bucket, tin, whatever you want to use here. When I spin it, it looks pretty even the whole way around. There's always going to be some natural variations when you're working with natural materials like this. And all this was done by sticking the ends of those branches into that wet foam. Now, in a minute here, I'm going to actually fill that um, little plastic container up with water because they're going to suck an awful lot of water out of the foam and that's what's going to keep them alive and pretty and green for a while. Um, I guess not really alive, they're already dead, they just don't know it yet. But you do have to keep it watered and kind of like uh, fresh cut flowers, you're going to have to water it fairly frequently, like depending on the size of your container and the amount of pine you have in there, you can maybe go every other day, but I would check it every day. And because you can't see it, it's often easy to somewhere along here, you know, you can find a spot where you can reach your finger underneath and, and feel if there's still water in there or not. If there's not water in your plastic or whatever your waterproof part is, it needs watered. Now, obviously this would be pretty and beautiful and green, just as is, but this one I'm making for a friend who does actually celebrate Christmas, and so I'm going to make it a little more red and green. I don't usually use red myself because it's just not a color I like. I think it's bright and clashing and uh, loud and demanding and annoying, and it's just not my favorite color, but lots of other people like it. So again, I've got a bow here that I have used in years past, I did make this, and if you guys are interested, I can I can show you how to make bows. That was a, a cool skill I learned. But because it was made out of wired ribbon, even though it's been a little smashed being stored, I can fluff it back up. You would not have to do a bow at all. You could decorate this just fine without a bow. 
but I've got one and I'm going to use it. So I'm going to kind of, this is where it's fine if you actually leave some holes because I need somewhere to put a bow. So I'm going to kind of look for where is maybe my biggest hole and I'm going to say it's right here. There's a little bit of a wire left on there from securing the bow and I'm just going to stick it right down in there between the pine needles like that. Now I can adjust my bow to make it fluff the way I want and I can kind of work the tails down in between the branches here so that they're hanging down uh, whatever way you would like. So I've got a bow so that's now kind of giving me a front side to this arrangement. If you didn't want a front side just don't do a bow or you could do really little bows and do several the whole way around but now for this particular one I've created a front side. Now another thing I've got that I reuse these things from year to year is some extra pine cones. They're just on a little wire so that I can stick them where I like. They obviously wouldn't have to be into the foam because we don't need them to be able to soak up water, but that is what um, is securing them as well. Now with most things, and this doesn't have to be precise, but odd numbers are the most attractive. I'm gonna do, let's see, three around kind of in three points, and then I actually want one in the middle. I just told you odd numbers are good. I'm going to say that's my one not odd number, and this one is my other separate odd number, even though that makes there be four in there. Now I have got, because I want to give this guy some more red color, I've got some rose hips. These are wild. It's the, uh, the fruit of a wild rose. They are roses. They have thorns. They're a pain to work with. Um, so I might use my gloves here, but it's really hard to be coordinated for things like this. But if you're going to use rose hips, be careful. They do have thorns. Again, I've cut the stems as long as I could when I went and collected them so that I have as much um, flexibility once I get to this stage as possible. There's a few dried leaves on there. They tend to fall off anyway, so I'm just going to pull them off. Now I'm going to take this little bunch and I'm going to say if I've got my, you know, I've got red right here and I've got my three pine cones around there. So I'm going to kind of work these rose hip twigs in between my pine cones. And even though I don't like red myself that much, and again, if you uh, snip branch tips at kind of an angle, it makes it easier to slide in here. So you can see that guy there. I'm going to slide one in between these two pine cones. But even though I don't like red that much myself, I do like um, the natural stuff like this more than you could, you know, you can buy artificial red flowers and stick in here if you want or something. But I do think the, the natural berries look really pretty. If you live in some other places, you could use holly berries, you could use bittersweet. Um, neither of those really grow here, but rose hips do. So I'm going to count that as being three red things because I've got my bow being the one, and I've got two, and I've got three. And again, I want them to show up a little more, so I'm going to put one out right in the middle. If I can make him go down through the branches there without stabbing me too badly. And, you know, I want a little more red around here, and I've got more rose hips, so I'm just going to stick a little bit more in there as well. You can just do whatever you like. And the fun thing about this is there's no uh, uh, there's no big consequence if you stick one in somewhere other than stabbing yourself with a thorn. Um, you can say, oh, I don't actually like that and pull it back out again. No harm done. You can just uh, change your mind. It's really easy. One more of these. I like this guy because he's a little smaller. Put on the other side of my bow there. fuller you get with uh, different twigs and branches and everything going into your phone, the more difficult this does get to work every new um, piece down in there. Now I've got kind of berries all over. I've got some pine cones I can see. This again, we could perfectly find stop right now. This I think is beautiful just as is, looks pretty natural. If you didn't have the bow there, I would just put another bunch of berries right there and it would look um, even more natural. Now, this I'm going to take a step further though, just because I want to. Um, 
You can use all kinds of twigs in here. Um, this is a fun one called Curly Ting Ting. It grows on a little curl like that. It does not grow with glittery sparkles on it. I actually prefer the natural stuff and I couldn't find any natural, uh, which was kind of a pain. And so I've got the sparkly glittery ones. But since I'm doing this for somebody else, I'm making it actually look more Christmassy instead of wintry like I would want. Um, that's going to be fine. They, you do have to be gentle if you use Ting Ting um, when you're uncurling this so you don't break the pretty little spirals. You can probably find this at your local dollar store um, or you could find any other kind of pretty twig out in the woods anywhere. But it does give a little bit of a holiday festive air. And that is a little bit too long so I'm going to shorten that stem up. I don't want them to stick out quite that far. There we go. I'm going to shorten all of these up a bit. You can do this same kind of arrangement for almost free. You wouldn't have to do a bow, or if you've already got a bow, then you can count that as being free. You, if you've got access, I guess pretty close to free, if you've got access to some kind of conifer greens. I'm going to just go around here and stick a few of these in. But, you know, you can get any kind of cheap container. As you can see, you can't really even see this container at all, so it wouldn't matter what it looked like. You could just do it in a plastic tub or in reality, and uh, that would be just fine because you're really not going to see it. But you can also use prettier containers, or you wouldn't have to make the pine quite so full, and then the um, container could show up a little bit more if it was something you wanted to show off. But you can get it... A, virtually any container that is waterproof and since you could even use the bottom of a milk jug or something you can probably do that for free if you can get access to pine don't go cut your neighbors uh you know landscaping trees or anything but if you've got somewhere you can access pine then you can have that that's very you know inexpensive or preferably free and so that basic part really doesn't have to cost anything or just a few cents if you got to go to local Goodwill and get a little container or something. Um, you can probably somewhere in your area find some kind of berries if you've got any kind of property, um, like holly berries or rose hips or something like that. If you don't have any of those and you want some red or color, again, you can probably go to the dollar store or somewhere like that, a uh, Michael's or a craft store, and buy some kind of little artificial berries if you want that. I like to use what I've got around in my area and just make this really inexpensive and, and that makes it fun. So I've got a little bit of my curly ting ting in there. Got plenty of that bunch left for more arrangements. So you're looking at the front but as we spin it here this is what it looks like the whole way around. If you were making one for a specific spot for yourself and you wanted to be able to sit flat up against a wall, you could make it flat. You would start that when you did um, your pine, that I, the part I did outside there. I would just fill out all this part and leave this um, back part empty. It would look funny if you were looking at it for the back, but if you want to be able to put it up closer to something, you can certainly do that. Now one more step that I'm going to do just because I think it's fun and this is a gift for somebody and I want it to look really pretty is I'm going to add some fresh flowers. This is just a bunch of daisies. I think they're beautiful. They're one of the cheapest flowers you can buy probably at a local grocery store or florist or whatever and they usually come in pretty big bunches. They're not expensive and so this is the one thing I'm going to add that it's definitely going to cost money unless you live somewhere where um, flowers are growing outside in your garden at uh, Christmas time. Again, when I clip any stem, I'm going to cut at an angle. I'm going to pull off a few extra leaves that are going to be down under there just so they're not in my way. Then I'm going to kind of measure that. See, that is taller than my whole arrangement. I don't want that, so I know my stem is still too long. But always start with it longer because you can cut it shorter and you can't cut it longer. Now if I stand that up there, I think that's even still a little bit too long. I like that. Again, these, if you're going to use any kind of fresh flower, and you can do whatever you want, whatever colors, do need to be able to go the whole way into the foam or they won't be able to suck up water and they will dry up and die right away. It would still be pretty for like a day or something, but it um, won't last nearly as long as this will if they're not 
into the foam. And sometimes you gotta be a little gentle with the flower stem because they're, I think he's still too long there actually. Um, the, you know, stems on a daisy aren't quite as sturdy and tough as a pine branch. So I'm kind of reaching my hand down in there, even though the pine's a little prickly and supporting the end of the stem as I stick him into the pine. I think that makes it look not like snow, but I like the white and the green with the red since I am trying to make this one actually look Christmassy. And again, I'm just kind of going to go around and, and put these into any holes between other things. And so now you can really see why you don't have to have your pine. Um, my foam is getting full. Sometimes you'll do that. I just snap the end of that. So now it's not going to stick in there very well. So I'm going to cut that off and go a little more carefully. I ran him smack into a pine branch is the problem with that in the foam and that bent him. There we go. Spin this so you guys can see what I'm doing. So now we really are not going to have any holes left. So we probably could have done, you know, a lot less pine from the very start and it wouldn't look like holes in there at this point if you're going to fill in other things like flowers and berries and pine cones. So we've got kind of three bunches there, but I want a little white down further on the bottom to show up. So maybe I'll do one kind of under my bow. Again, when you get toward the end, it gets uh, increasingly difficult to get a flower in there, which is yet another reason to not stuff your foam too full of pine when you're first starting on this. There we go. So I get some white under there like that. And just do a couple more kind of around here in a lower layer. And I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do this. If you think it's pretty when you're done, then that's just fine. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything if you like different colors, uh, different things to add in here. You know, it's you're trying to make something pretty that you like. So if you think it's pretty, then you have succeeded. And it doesn't matter if it's the way I would do it or the way I would like it or any of that. It's part of the fun of flower arranging. Maybe that's why I like it. It's a little bit like cooking. Okay, you can kind of do whatever you want and use the ingredients you like and make it the way you like it. I'm gonna need a little bit of white right here, yeah. And then if you want, if you like the real glittery, glitzy side of decorating for holidays and such, um, you could certainly I mean, you can get flowers that are like spray painted with sparkles. That's just not my style. You could do more ribbons. You could do any kind of anything you could stick into um, a flower arrangement or a uh, like pine garland. Any anything you like, you could put in here. Whatever you think is attractive. But for me, I think that is plenty. As I said, I think this would have been beautiful had we stopped with just the pine. I think it would have looked beautiful if we stopped with just the berries and pine cones. And I think it, if I did any more, for me, it would look over the top. You wouldn't even be able to see the pine anymore, and it would look too cluttery. But different people like different things, so do whatever you like. But there is a beautiful pine basket. It's going to make a lovely gift. If the recipient keeps that watered in that little container in there, this will be gorgeous for um, the pine part will last like a month or more. The daisies, because I did put fresh daisies in there, will um, dry out and die a little bit before that. What you can do if you want to refresh it is after a week or whatever, when they start to look ugly, you can yank them out and go back to just a pine arrangement or go buy yourself a fresh bunch of daisies and stick fresh ones in and it'll look good for another week. 
So whatever you want to do with that, but as long as it's kept watered, this will stay nice and fresh and green. This will be beautiful. This, because um, I reused the bow, I had found my pine cones, I've got my uh, pine greens for free, I picked my rose hips for free. The only thing that really cost me anything was four dollars for a bunch of daisies to put in here and I could have skipped that. So this, which if you go to a florist is going to cost you, depending on your area, I've seen things like this run anywhere from twenty something dollars to eighty something dollars or more. This cost me four dollars and some time and that is going to be a gift for somebody else. Do another one and show you the colors I actually prefer since I'm not going to do the, the red and green Christmas thing myself. Thanks for watching folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.